Hi everybody, it's Paul Nelson with Edgar Toro Pumps and Iris Valves. Today I'd like to talk to you about the Iris Valve, and particularly what is CV. But before we jump into CV, I'm going to give you some history and show you what an Iris Valve is. Now, Edgar has been in business since 1947, and we're known as the premier pump builder in the world. But over on the left here, see that red valve? That's what we're here to talk about today. Egger's market for the Iris valve is municipal wastewater. And what we're doing is we're feeding low pressure air to the aeration basins. And we're do, feeding it down a drop leg and through what's called a fine bubble diffuser. And as those bubbles come out, it feeds the bacteria, gets them energized and hungry, and they eat the bacteria. Now, historically, the municipalities always just went and over aerated. More is better, but they're wasting 20, 30, 40, 50% energy, and their process is not better. In fact, engineers are learning that low DO and ABAC, ammonia based aeration control, um, is better to stabilize the process. Now, the, the industry expert is Tom Jenkins at Gentech. And he wrote an article back in October 21 that said, controlling DO, a good average isn't good enough. And he shows that in milligrams per liter, the DO goes from two to four, down to zero, up to four. Now, you think that's an exaggeration, but it's not. That's what they would do. And they would just say, a good average. Well, you know what? That's a great way to be fined because you're out of permit when you're discharging the wastewater into the rivers. So you need better control, right? Now, this is an example of a plant that we worked on five years ago outside of Boston. And this was the manual butterfly valves. This is our valve, but before tuning. And this is our valve after tuning, flatlining. And let me tell you, they're very happy. The industry loves this valve. And this is what it looks like. And this is our latest generation valve, which we released three years ago as maintenance free. Now, what is it? the iris valve? Well, it's essentially closing orifice. Now, we all know that in the center of the pipe is the maximum velocity, right? And so by having a centrally closing orifice, you're always maintaining that maximum stable velocity in the center. And that's where we take our pressure measurement from. This is what the valve looks like. And it was designed back in 1958 by Emil Egger, sitting at his desk smoking cigarettes. He had this little ashtray sitting there. And all it simply was, you push the button down and it would jetty open. He thought, wow, there's a, there's a valve technology. And much like the shutter of a camera or the optics of your eye. Now, how does it work? Well, we've got six blades. It's a low pressure valve because these blades are unsupported, so they're concave and convex, and they ride on themselves. But what drives it is this cam slot and these cams, and believe it or not, the outer body rotates. So the way it works is I rotate this body, and it opens. And then reversing the stroke, it closes. Very cool. Now, like I said, it's a centric flow profile. So we're taking advantage of the highest velocity in the pipe, which is in the center, and we're mounting a flow meter in front of it or upstream. Unlike the butterfly valve that has a low pressure zone and a high pressure zone with a lot of instability, a lot of turbulence, and a lot of pressure drop. You know, I've been bidding jobs where I'm 0.15 PSI pressure drop across the valve, and the butterfly valve is 1.8 PSI. Again, burning energy. So, Design features are centrally closing orifice, which means that we can either control flow or pressure. No change in geometry, completely free passage, hysteresis free, repeatable, 99%, large control range from zero to 100, high regulating accuracy, low pressure drop, and maintenance free. So, today you joined us to learn about CV, and I'd like to talk to you about CV. CV is the valve coefficient. Now, in the pump world, you can define a pump by flow rate and head pressure. And so an engineer could spec 200 GPM at 32 feet ahead, and we could put it on a test stand and test it. And guess what? You either do it or you don't. Whereas with a valve, there's a gray area. 
So the engineers created this standard. CV is the valve's capacity for liquid or gas to flow through it. It's defined as the volume of water at 60 degrees F that'll flow through a valve per minute with a pressure drop of one PSI. So what does that all mean? Well, we ran tests over at the Utah Water Research Laboratory using the ANSI ISA S75.02 standard. And what we said was, let's open the valve to 10% open and set one PSI pressure drop and measure the flow rate. And then we'll open it to 20%. Set one PSI pressure drop, measure flow rate. And we do that 10, 20, 30, 40, all the ways up. And the CV curve looks like this at 10, 20, 30, 40. And it's very hard to see, but it's these light blue dots. Now, why is that important? Remember that butterfly valve that has that big disc and stem in the flow stream? Well, it's an obstruction and it's turbulence. And believe it or not, because we're fully open with no obstruction, if you set us at 100, they're at 83. So they're doing 83% of the flow that we're doing, or 25% less. It's unbelievable because we're doing so much more flow in the same size valve. So if you come to me and say, hey, Paul, I want to replace my 12-inch butterfly valves, I'm going to size and select the valve to probably be 8-inch. So you're pulling out a 12-inch butterfly and putting in an 8-inch iris. And this is why. Now, the secret sauce is not just a valve. We use a quality actuator. We have a thermal mass flow meter that's two diameters upstream, two diameters upstream of that. Now, why are we doing this? Well, the flow meter people want 20 diameters in front of the flow meter. Now, we want to give you 99% repeatability and 1% or 2% accuracy, okay? But we can't do that if you don't have enough pipe. So we research ANSI, and they have a standard that says the best flow conditioner is a 50% reduction in the pipe which works our advantage because remember, we took out a 12-inch butterfly valve. We're putting in an 8-inch iris, so we have 50%. And then they recommend this 14-degree reducer, 7 degrees on each side. Then we go 2 diameters to the flow meter, 2 diameters to the valve. And then on the downstream, we use that same 14-degree reducer as an expander to take advantage of what's called pressure recovery. The secret sauce is the package. It's the valve, actuator, flow meter, and good proper hydraulics, good piping. Now, I'd like to invite you to go to YouTube and search Agar Iris Valve Pipe Spool. And when you do that, you'll get this video come up. And this video highlights a lot of the features of this that I don't have time to talk about today. Also, you can go to irisvalve.com airflowcontrolvalve.net and pressurecontrolvalve.com or certainly email us at info at agarpumps.com. As our industry moves towards low DO and ABAC, process engineers require a greater range of airflow control in order to stabilize the process. Agar's constant geometry iris is the only valve technology available which offers a linear flow curve from zero to 100 with 99% repeatability. Thank you, everybody.